So in this video, what I want to tackle is how to solve quadratics by factoring. And the main thing that we're, the main reason why we want to use factoring is because that's going to rewrite our expression as a product. And we can rewrite the expression as a product. We can then apply the zero product property because we can't use inverse operations, right? Whenever you have more than one variable, like in this case, we have a quadratic and we have a linear term, right? So we have more than one variable. We can't use our inverse operations. We can only use inverse operations when we have one term. All right. So what we want to do is we want to rewrite this as a product. And that is going to be the whole idea of factoring. So remember, when you're trying to factor, what we want to do is always look at this last term, right? And if the last term is positive, what we're doing is we're looking for the sum of the factors to give you the middle term. Now, if your middle term is negative, that means both the factors have to be negative. So basically what I'm asking myself is what two numbers multiply to give me a 12 that add to give me negative seven. And again, thinking of factors of 12 in my head, 12 and one, six and two, three and four, I say, oh, three and four give me seven. But again, since it's negative, it's going to be a negative three and a negative four. So now I can write this in the factored form of X minus a four times a X minus three still equals zero. Okay. But now I have this times this equals zero. Now, if one of these was equal to zero, everything was equal to zero, right? So what that means is I can set both of these expressions equal to zero. That is what the zero product property allows us to do. Right? Because again, if like, if this is four, right, that makes that zero, the whole equation zero, right? If that's three, that makes that equation zero, the whole equation zero, right? So both of those solutions could be true. So if, um, so the zero product property, one of these solutions, um, or both, right, can make that equation true. So in this case, all I simply need to do now is you can see I only have one variable, right? So now I can use my inverse operations to solve. So in this case, I get an X equals four. And over here, I get an X equals three. Now, in this example, you can see my last number is positive, right? Um, and now my middle term, though, is also positive. So now I'm looking for the factors of six, six and one, five and two, or six and one, let's see, six and one, three and two. There you go. To add to give me a five. But now since five is positive, they both need to be positive. And hopefully you recognize that six and one is seven, but three and two is five. So hey, we're all good. So I do an X plus a three times an x plus two equals zero. Again, apply the zero product property, x plus five, or I'm sorry, x plus three equals zero, and x plus two is equal to zero. So therefore, x is equal to a negative three, and x is equal to a negative two, as you just go ahead and solve. And those are going to be your two solutions. Those are going to be your, we sometimes we call them like the roots or also the x-intercepts of the equation. So hopefully this was like fairly straightforward for these two examples, because in these next two examples are where a lot of students making the mistakes, right? And you can see the reason why is they say, oh, well, now I only have a Y squared and a Y on this side. Like, should I just factor out a Y? And that's what a lot of students will do. They'll factor out a Y. I don't know, right? And get something like this. And then they'll just make something up because that's basically what you're doing from this case. Um, you can't apply the 20 product rule, right? You can't apply when you have a product equal to 20 that you can apply the same thing for the zero product property. So don't do this, okay? So don't try to factor this thing out. The main thing I want you to understand when you're trying to solve quadratics by factoring, you got to get everything to the same side, all right? So what I want you to actually do in this case is subtract the 20 over to the other side. So therefore, you have a y squared plus y minus a 20 is equal to zero, okay? So you want it set equal to zero, right? Because again, we want a product equal to zero so we can apply the zero product property. So now I got to think to myself, all right, now my last term is negative, right? So instead, now when the factors, I'm not thinking for what two factors add to give me my middle term. I'm looking for the difference of my two factors. So now I got to think of my difference of my factors um, for a, now I got to look at the difference of the factors for 20. So we have 20 and one, I have 10 and two. Um, I have five and four and oh, five and four have a difference of one, right? Perfect. Now that difference needs to be a positive one. Okay. So now you got to think like, if you're doing a difference, that really, what that means is like one of the terms is negative. One of those factors is negative. So is it positive five plus negative four gives you a positive one or negative five plus a positive four. And hopefully you recognize it's positive five, right? So therefore I can rewrite this as an X plus five times a Y minus a four, sorry, five plus four. I was, I think I was saying it incorrectly. So it's five, pl ne po five plus a negative four, right? Not negative five plus a positive four. But again, that works. And again, like you can always check your work, right? If you're like concerned, like, oh crap, did I do this wrong? Like multiply back out to make sure you go back to your original equation. But now in this case, I can apply the zero product property. Um, y plus five is equal to zero and y minus four is equal to zero. So therefore, y is equal to a negative five and y is equal to a positive four. Now, in this case, again, a lot of students will make mistakes, right? Because what they'll try to do is they'll try to factor this. 
And they'll say, oh, like this works. Like what, like, again, we have a negative, right? And so we're trying to find the difference of our two factors. And then we have negative, um, negative two. So they say, oh, well, I can factor this into a Y minus a four times a Y plus two, like it works, right? But then again, you have a product equal to seven. That's not going to work, right? So don't do this. Um, you got to get everything equal to this, everything over to the same side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract a seven onto both sides. And actually, I'm going to show that on the other side over here just because I didn't show that. And I think it's really, really important that you say the main goal here, guys, is to get this equal to zero. So therefore, let's rewrite this as a y squared minus a 2y minus a 15 is equal to zero. Okay, so now I need to go ahead and factor this. Again, I am looking for a difference in my factors and that difference is going to be negative. So I think of my factors of 15, I have 15 and one, I have five and three, five and three, hey, five and three have a difference of two. Um, but again, do I want it to be a negative five and positive three or positive five and negative three? Well, obviously, hopefully you recognize that it should be a negative five and positive three. So therefore this can be factored into a Y minus five times a Y plus three is equal to zero. Now you can just apply the zero product property, right? And you could say Y, minus five equals zero and y plus three is equal to zero. And you could probably actually get to your answer a little bit quicker, right? And you could just probably write it from there. However, the reason why I do like to write this out is because again, once if I make a mistake, we can easily kind of point, pinpoint like where I made that mistake, right? And again, a lot of times also students will make the mistake and they'll say, oh, y is negative five, y is three. No, no, no. You got to make sure you set each of your factors equal to zero and then go ahead and solve. And also once you get into, once we get into like more complicated problems, um, you'll kind of see how that plays out as well. Like that, like that's a very important skill to make sure that you're staying um, correctly on. All right. And on this next example, again, some people, once we kind of get into inverse operations, they like want to take the square root on both sides. Don't do that, right? Again, what was our goal in the rule here? We're trying to factor this, right? And even if like it doesn't tell you to use factoring, the main thing that I, I want you to always, you know, kind of look into is, you know, try factoring first. You should always be trying to do factoring first, right? So, you know, even if you have like different operations to be able to solve, you know, different techniques, try to always look into solving by factoring first, because again, the more practice you get at factoring, the faster and easier it becomes. And a lot of times you can do a lot of the stuff that I'm spending my time talking my head, like explaining, you'll be able to do that in your head as well, right? It just takes some practice though. So you do got to kind of, you know, put in that time and effort into that. All right. So my last number is negative. Um, and so I'm looking for a difference and, oh, sorry, that's a positive, right? Positive 20. I did that incorrectly. All right. So my last number is positive and my middle term is positive. So I'm looking for the factors of 20, <clears throat> excuse me. Then I'm going to give me a add to give me a positive nine. So I see 20 and one, 20 and one give me 21. No, nope. 10 and two gives me a 12. Nope. Five and four give me nine. Hey, five and four. And again, they're both have to be positive. So therefore that's a T plus a five times a T plus four. Let's go ahead and write it like that. So T plus four is equal to a zero. All right. And again, I'll just use the zero product property. So T plus five is equal to zero. T plus four is equal to zero. And therefore I can say T is equal to a negative five and T is going to equal a negative four. Um, now in this case, we're kind of got everything set. So it's like, Hmm, what's the catch? Well, there's really not really catch. I don't, at least I don't think in this example, uh, my last number is positive. So I'm looking for two factors that are going to multiply, give me 32. They're going to add, right? So we're going to find, add them to give me negative 18. So that just means both factors are going to be negative. And so now let's just think about the factors of 32. Again, I want to kind of do this in my head. I don't want to spend a lot of time, you know, writing things out. And I'm hopefully at your, you're at the point too, where you have some basic understanding with factoring. So let's just kind of, kind of go through the factors of six of 32 and see which ones add to give me 18. So I have 32 and one. No, that's a 33. I have 16 and two. That gives me an 18. Hey, that works. All right. Now, again, they need to multiply to give me a positive, but add to give me negative. That just means both factors are negative. So this would be an X minus 16 and an X minus a two. Now, hopefully recognize what I'm going to do. I'm going to set it equal to zero. I'm going to set them both equal to zero and then go ahead and solve. So therefore I can get a X equals 16 and an X equal to two. So we'll just kind of speed this up um, a little bit from on there. In this case, again, just kind of mixing things around. So just be careful guys, you know, get that X over to the same side. So X squared minus an X, we already have a 20 over there equals zero. So now again, I'm looking for the difference of, um, th I'm looking for factors that have a difference of going to be, factors is going to have a difference of one that um, are a difference of negative one. 
right? So one factor is positive, one factor is negative. And immediately I'm looking, I'm thinking of 20. So I have, you know, 20, I'm thinking of five and four, and I want a negative five and a positive four to give me that negative one. So therefore it'd be an X minus a five times an X plus a four and X minus five times X plus four. And yeah, that's going to give me an X is equal to a five and X is going to equal a negative four. Um, X is going to equal a negative four. Yep. And the last one here is we have negative 48 and a 13. Okay. So let's actually write this out because 48 has quite a bit, right? So let's do a 48 times one. Now, again, it's a negative, right? So we're looking for the difference of my factors. Okay. So I could do a 24 times two. Um, let's see, I could do a 16, 24. Um, so three is going to go into there. Uh, let's see, 10, 16 times, right? 16, yeah, 16 times three. And hey, those have a difference of three, right? That works, right? Now, again, it has to be a positive difference. So therefore, that's why my 16 is positive and my three will be negative. So I can rewrite this as an M plus a 16 times an M minus a three equals zero. And therefore, I get an M is equal to a negative 16 right? And an M is equal to a positive three. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. I hope, and if so, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.